With the complex topic of, of trees and irrigation, it was a no-brainer to invite uh, uh, the renowned expert in innovative tree crop irrigation, Netafim. And today we are joined by Dr. Itamar Nadav, uh, the chief uh, agronomy scientist at Netafim. Dr. Nadav is an irrigation engineer uh, with a PhD in soil and water sciences. You've been working with Netafim for the last 10 decades, leading the remote sensing and precision agricultural team. Itamar, welcome to the webinar and thank you very much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you very much for hosting. We're very happy and we're very glad and, and we're very excited to hear about your experience and all the awesome things that you're doing and interesting stuff and innovation you're doing at Netafim. Um, could you please tell us a little bit about Netafim and, and some of the cutting edge work that you guys are working on? Yeah, so for those of you who doesn't know Netafim, so we are the first and largest uh, drip irrigation company, and we're not just dealing with the drip irrigation, we are dealing with the entire system. So we have uh, our irrigation solution from the water source down to the uh, last dripper, uh, and that's uh, including the um, filters and the irrigation equipment, and also uh, sensors. Lately, uh, we're also involving with the remote sensing along with you. Awesome. Um, Itamar, you're breaking a little bit, so could you just move uh, uh, come a little bit closer to the microphone? Perfect. Sure. That, that would be great. Awesome. Thank you very much for sharing that introduction. And, and you guys have been doing work with, with digital platforms and exploring remote sensing and how that could, could be part of, of the irrigation scheduling. So, this is exactly what we came to talk about, and we see the remote sensing as a new uh, way to see the um, entire field, uh, not just by uh, local uh, sensors that are representative uh, of just one uh, plant or tree or just uh, uh, one location of the soil. We see the um, remote sensing as a comprehensive and uh, um, a great solution to see the entire plot the entire farm and uh, it's, a, it's an excellent added value for the farmer that wants to man manage his uh, farm uh, with much more precise uh, tools in order to achieve uh, better yield. Awesome. You can take it from here. Okay, so Again, thank you very much for joining us to this um, uh, webinar today. So uh, Netafim is dealing with the remote sensing uh, not for a long time. Um, I'm doing that um, for a few years, but Netafim is not doing it commercially yet. Um, and we started to dive into that, um, I think uh, about a year ago. And then we had to choose uh, from um, a lot um, a very wide spectrum of companies. As you can see in the images now, there are a lot of platforms from drones to satellites, a lot of companies that are doing that. And eventually we had to screen down uh, all those companies and choose only one um, company to work with. So after a um, um, series of uh, screening, um, we actually chose to work with uh, Fluosat because we thought that Fluosat is an excellent company. It's very innovative. We can talk to them as um, on a science level. We can talk to them on a grower level. We can talk to them about anything. And they are fully understand the needs of a company like uh, Netfim and fully need and know uh, what the farmer needs. And actually, it's a good combination of a remote sensing company and an irrigation company. So we actually see Fluoset more than just a provider of remote sensing service. We actually see them as a, as a strategic uh, partner for Netafim um, to supply us with a good um, product of remote sensing. And along with our knowledge of irrigation, we can actually create a good solution for the farmer. So what we're going today to talk today is a little bit about uh, remote sensing and irrigation 
I guess that you have some background on uh, remote sensing from the last uh, webinar. And I'll give some inputs on irrigation. We will talk about from data to decision and irrigation scheduling because it's a very important issue. Um, just remote sensing images is purely data. And this is something that not so beneficial for the farmer. He wants to make decision out, out of it, and this is where the combination of uh, Netafim and Flowsat come to hand. And um, at the last uh, section of this webinar, I'll show you in a glance the top end, at the top edge of uh, future irrigation and precise irrigation that uh, we in Netafim is working along with uh, Fluorosat. So remote sensing, we have several um, platforms for remote sensing. We have satellites, we have aircraft, we have drones, each one with its own um, advantages and disadvantages. We have different image uh, resolution. Uh, usually the satellites have um, a lower resolution and drones and aircraft are have a bit resolution. We have different wavelengths and bands that we can make different indices out of it. And uh, from each index, we can get um, different kind of data and different kind of uh, interpretation. And I think that everything in remote sensing is about the interpretation and how you take it from the data level to the, to the execution level. So usually farmers use a um, soil sensor, a plant sensor, that as we um, described uh, before, they measure only one plant or one uh, location. And it's like looking um, on the field with a microscope. It's not really representative of the field. And you can't really uh, know what is happening in your entire field or orchard or or um, what crop you you um, you grow. So when you use remote sensing, it's like using now a telescope where you can see the entire plot and see how different areas in the plot are behaving, regardless the uh, the one uh, plant that you are actually measuring with um, um, plant sensors. So it's very important. It's the first time that you can actually see the entire plot. So usually when we talk about remote sensing, everybody thinks about the, uh, the image that you see on the screen now. Beautiful NDVI map, very colorful. You can see a lot of details, but the problem with that image is that for several of you that doesn't know deeply remote sensing. This image could look like a Rorschach uh, image that anybody can interpret um, as he thinks so. So um, uh, this is exactly our job as an irrigation company and a remote sensing company to take this um, image and to translate it into something that a farmer can actually use. And I was talking to a lot of farmers that are using remote sensing and I was asking them, so how did it help you? And they said that, yeah, it's helped me because I sometimes can see uh, different uh, spots and sometimes I can um, see if, um, if there is any problem, but they, they need a lot of time and to switch between different dates in order to see that. So the, what, our job is, is actually to take data, which is the images, and translate it into actions. Like you see in this, um, in this slide now, uh, we can mark a spot and tell the grower, go to this location exactly and check this spot. There might be a problem there, maybe a pest or something else. And another action that can be done is to give him a, a recommendation, reduce your irrigation or increase your irrigation. This is something actionable that the farmer can understand and he doesn't need to spend any time 
analyzing the images by himself. And uh, we are helping him with that by doing the analysis ourselves. So what can we basically achieve with uh, remote sensing? First of all, a variability map. With one shot, one image can show you the variability in your plot. Not always you can do something in, about your variability, but this is something to talk at the end of this presentation. Uh, you can see the changes over time with many um, images um, um, day after day or week by week. Uh, you can see irrigation problems, um, uh, fertilization uh, deficiencies. Um, you can even spot diseases. You can do irrigation scheduling as we will uh, talk shortly. You can divide your uh, plot into uh, management zones and manage them differently according to the variability. And you can also use the, um, the platform in order to set alerts. Um, I will show you in a minute that the system can um, send you alerts in, in order to, to notice you that there's a problem in a specific location, so you don't need to do it yourself. And of course, if you do use uh, sensors, we can recommend you where is the best uh, location to put your sensor. So if we have a, a map of, um, of an NDVI or other index of your plot, we can say, go here, there is a problem, or go here, there's a, a good spot to place your sensor or go here to, to take a soil sample or tissue sample. So it's very helpful to have a, a full vision of the, of the uh, plot and you need someone to do the analysis for you. So there are several groups of um, uh, indices that we can use. First of all, uh, great ro uh, growth rate of the uh, of the plot, and you can see if the plant is developing as it, as it should be. Uh, some indices of uh, water content or stress, uh, nitrogen profile, um, other um, um, pigments, and also carbon for um, in um, in um, ecological research. They use that a lot. So if we we'll look on the growth rate, and this is an uh, almond uh, plantation that I'm doing one of my experiments. So you can clearly see the pinpoints that uh, we placed in the, in, the, um, in the plot. And it's very nice to see the exact time that the almonds start to wake up early in the season and the flashing is starting. And then you can see the different locations and how they behave. So you can see the variability within the, um, the plantation and um, you can act accordingly. So you can go to the specific location and check if there's a, a soil problem or irrigation problem. And you can actually uh, also use your, um, your NDVI curve in order to uh, schedule the irrigation, as I will um, show you shortly. And, 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 and Itamar, let me just say one more thing about that, which, which is something that you and me discussed about. And, and this is the highlight of the image. When you have an image and you have it throughout the growing season, so you're able to track, you're able to compare individual trees, how they're performing, or individual zones, and how, how they, how's their NDVI developing compared to each other, and, and, and as, a, as a result, make a decision. Do I need, is this qualified to be a zone? Is this qualified to be treated differently? So definitely the, having the imagery throughout the season, using that remote sensing, that, that capability to have images, multiple images, uh, is just very powerful to track it over time. And this graph yeah. really highlights that. Yeah, sure. And, and technology um, is on our side because um, for those of you or that have used uh, remote sensing, um, let's say um, even five years ago, we didn't have a lot of satellites as we do today and not with that uh, good resolution as we have today. So previously we had um, image every 16 day in uh, 30 meter resolution. That's not the case today. Uh, today we have um, three satellites every five days, 10 meter resolution. That's excellent. And 
in the future it will be even better so um, technology is definitely on our side I, I got one so, quick question about this graph since we're on it so um, you've got the date on the x-axis and on the y-axis it's the NDVI uh, score so that yeah. was one of the questions from uh, Paula and another question was about the pins. Um, so those pins are randomly selected. So Itamar wanted to pick those individual, uh, uh, those uh, um, areas or trees. Um, and the logic behind picking them, as you can see, they kind of represent uh, all, all the different uh, of, um, um, intervals of NDVI all the way from the red to the, to the green. So the selection of the pins is something that Itamar did. Yeah, it's a, it's a basic um, uh, selection of uh, good and bad and average locations on the field. And this is very highly variable uh, plantation. And this is the reason why we chose to do our research on that. But it can use for other um, uh, crops and other plantations. And it's uh, also a good tool to, to see if there's any difference between the different locations um, during the growing season. So let's move on to um, data to decision, which is the main issue here, because as I told you before, farmers do not look for data, they look for decision, they look for actionable items, something that they can work with and not spend a lot of time in front of the computer and trying to figure out what they see in the images. So the basic one is irrigation, and there are several methods to do irrigation scheduling. First of all, most of the farmers doing by their own experience, a lot of trial and error, and it's okay. If it's good for you, then it's very okay to do it. Many of them use advisors that tell them from their experience or uh, what they see on other plots, um, if, you, if you need to increase or reduce your irrigation. A lot of farmers just look um, on the other side and see what the neighbor is doing and they are doing the copy. Sometimes it's good, sometimes um, uh, they are just copying the right, the, the, the wrong answer. Um, so you need to, look, to, to know where you look to look for. And uh, there's the ET models that we will talk uh, shortly how to use it. A lot of um, um, growers use sensors, monitoring ground sensors. And a um, few of them are doing mix, mix and match. So uh, they're using sensors and experience and they listen to the sensors and sometimes they don't. So all those options are on the table and everybody's um, using, all, I guess, most of them. So the most uh, basic one is the ET um, uh, model, which you have the, um, uh, the equation in front of you. The ETC is actually the ET crop. This is the amount of water that the uh, plant or tree is using daily uh, in terms of uh, millimeters per day. And you can get this data by, um, by uh, multiplying the um, evapotranspiration, the ET0, <coughs> which you can obtain from a weather station or weather service or whatever. Multiply by Kc. Kc is the uh, crop coefficient. And as you can see on the image of the corn below, when the seasons um, is uh, progressing, the, the crop is increasing and therefore is, is using much more water. So the Kc is increasing along the season. So when the season is um, um, progressing, you need to irrigate much more especially because the KC is increasing. Now, in order to know your KC, there are a lot of models to, to know it, but sometimes you have to go to the field and estimate it. But when using remote sensing, you can actually not estimate it, but know it much more uh, accurately by using remote sensing. And as you can see <clears throat> on the image uh, in front of you, so this is a vineyard. And this is a vineyard, <coughs> sorry, this is a vineyard in Israel and you can see the different dates and you can see that the color is changing along the season. This is uh, pretty much the end of the season. But if we look on the trend of the NDVI during the season, 
and the KC for vineyards, you can see that they actually match um, almost one by one. So I can use, and I'm using in some of my experiments, I'm using the NDVI in order to obtain the KC. And I don't need to go to the field and uh, look and estimate the KC. I just see it on the, on the NDVI. And this is um, good for vineyards. And there are a lot of models for um, uh, citrus and almonds and uh, vineyards and other crops, also um, open field crops. And this is just a simple model. You can do it much more sophisticated <clears throat> and to uh, insert um, uh, thermal imaging and other indices and other um, remote sensing tools in order to schedule your irrigation. Um, so if we talk about uh, thermal imaging, so the basic uh, index that everybody is using is the uh, NDVI. On, and on this case, you can see the high resolution NDVI. You can actually see almost each one of the trees. And in a second, you will see each one of the trees. And you can uh, make your irrigation based on that. But usually the problem with NDVI is that it's not sensitive enough for water stress. So for that, we have the thermal imaging. The thermal imaging is very sensitive for water stress. And if the plant is stressed, the temperature of the canopy will be higher. And this is the variability that you see here. And actually, you can see that the variability in the NDVI matches, again, one by one to the thermal imaging. Because our larger trees are, um, have um, probably much more water. So the water status in each one of those trees is better than the uh, smaller trees. And if you want to know the reason to that, and uh, we'll talk about it in a second, but here on this graph, you can see a very good correlation between the temperature of the canopy and the stem water potential measured in uh, selected trees in this uh, plantation. So the thermal imaging can actually replace the uh, old school stem water potential measurement with the uh, pressure bomb that you need to go in the middle of the day and measure uh, just a few points. Um, thermal imaging can show you the entire plantation and not just a few trees. So um, it's, a, it's a good tool for irrigation scheduling. And if you want to know uh, the uh, source of this uh, variability, you can look on the EC map. That the EC map is actually the soil texture variability. And you can see there the um, red spot in the middle. This is much more clay soil. And if you have much more clay soil, you have much more available water. And this is the reason why the trees on that spot are healthier and stronger and have lower temperature. They just have more water. So um, if you look on the most right um, image, you can see a very high resolution. And this is actually one of the um, Flurosat apps. It's the 3L um, app that they can actually tell you how much trees you have in the plantation and how many of them are underperforming and overperforming or average uh, trees. And this is a very powerful tool for the farmer because sometimes he doesn't know all this data. He, he, sometimes he doesn't know how many trees he has in his uh, plantation and certainly he doesn't know how many of them are not yielding as much as he thinks he, they, uh, they do. Um, so Manal, I will let mm -hmm. you talk about this, um, um, this tree health uh, app. Exactly. So, so what you said is, is, absolute, is absolutely important, which is trying to assess and look and inspect at the, at the individual tree level. And this is taking advantage of this high resolution. So you go through the hassle of flying a drone or, or, or buying a high resolution imagery. 
taking it a step further, trying to identify the individual trees and then give them, put them into different categories according to their NDVI value or NDRE value or other scoring uh, index. Um, and, and the main application, the main, the main way our users are and our customers are using that capability is to identify the low performing. And then there's the question of, do I wanna make it homogeneous and give them more and push them up or do I wanna uh, focused on the most productive and make sure that they're giving me the yield that I uh, that I'm plan that I've uh, accounted for towards the end of it. So there's a lot of there's a lot of way where zone, zooming down, zooming into those individual trees can help you make a decision. It can help you also assess if it's worth to be identified as a zone. It helps you assess throughout the season. Has it been weak since the beginning? How's it been performing? Uh, so there's a lot of intelligence that you can derive on um, a single tree level or on a zone level. And that depends on what kind of an application, what kind of uh, equipments you use, what kind of, what is your minimum decision um, area that you can make <clears throat> an action on. Um, but definitely it highlights the areas that need your attention, it highlights the areas and, and the specific trees that you want to benchmark against or you want to put more effort and try to solve a problem that's causing them to be weak. Um, so that's pretty much the main application of the tree health analytics. And you can put them into different buckets. You can say, okay, show me the least performing or show me the best performing or split all of my orchard into four categories. So I can spatially see where do I need to go and scout? Where do I, where do I need to maybe place my sensors? So a lot of intelligence could be derived from looking at them on, on such a zoomed in uh, level. Um, I do, I, there's a few questions that came in about uh, the KC that you mentioned. So let's just take a moment to answer them and then we can, we can move and we can talk about uh, the application of that. Um, one question was about the KC, if, if the formula is good for orchard. Uh, the ET multiplied by KC. And, and so can, could you share a little bit from your experience uh, when dealing with orchards and does the um, uh, field cover, does the canopy cover uh, play a role in correcting for the NDVI? Yeah, sure. Um, those KCs also works for, um, for orchards. It's uh, quite different from open field that um, the KC changes dramatically. In, uh, in orchards, it's a bit different and it's different between varieties. So almonds, it's not like avocado. Avocado is, you irrigate it all through the season, also in winter. Um, the uh, almonds have a very specific time that you need to irrigate more or less. Uh, I just gave uh, um, the, the simple equation, but um, we have uh, um, a very good models, also KC models, for uh, each one of these um, uh, tree crops, and we uh, correlated them with the remote sensing and um, other uh, sensors in order to give the exact um, value of irrigation. Okay, yes. Um, another question that came in was uh, the thermal imaging. Uh, the question was, was it obtained by a satellite? Uh, uh, platform and can you share which sensor? So the thermal imagery that we showed was captured by uh, Teravian uh, in California. So they fly sensors that are multispectral and thermal. So this was through the thermal sensor by Teravian. Yes. Okay, so um, let's move on. So um, again, as in the image uh, before, you can see the uh, three health um, analytics. And uh, as Manal said, it's a powerful tool for the farmer in order to go to specific locations and check the trees and treat them if needed. And then to come back a few months after that and to see if there's any change in that and if your action was uh, meaningful or not. So um, again, a uh, very powerful tool for, um, for uh, uh, crop management. And um, um, Manal, you're, you can talk about uh, those uh, slides because you know them uh, better than me. Yes, indeed. This is one of the, uh, this is also an almond uh, field. And it, as you can see, there's 
different blocks within the within this field and those blocks are different irrigation blocks or different it could be the case of different varietal blocks um, in in this specific scenario it's both and and what's key and what i wanted to highlight in this um, in this slide is the capability of of looking at those scores and so you get the data. This is satellite data for, for, the, for, for Paolo that's asking. This NDVI is coming from the satellite. It's a 10 meter by 10 meter resolution. And you can see there's variability and there's different uh, um, responses and there's different variation uh, inside these, these different blocks. And the point here is to look at the NDVI throughout the season, look at the CCCI and see how it's, how it's varying, how it's changing. Which, uh, um, which block, which variety, uh, which irrigation uh, uh, amount that's being received, how is this being reflected? And um, as you can see now, we're trying to compare. We're trying to compare uh, the pink and the blue. And by comparing both of them, um, and now we added one more to it. So you're able to make an assessment on that block level. When, for example, if, if this is the case where we're trying different deficit uh, uh, amount of irrigation, so you're trying to, to, to make the conclusion, was the 20% deficit enough? How did it compare to the 30% deficit? So you have this tool to be able to um, um, assess the different practices and see its reflection on the growth, on how much the trees are responding. And this all plays into uh, uh, monitoring your fields to make a better irrigation decision. This is a, is a zoom in to the NDVI uh, map as well as to the CCCIs, which are different indices that we've discussed uh, in, in previously um, and how each one of them relate to a certain parameter. For example, the CCCI would relate to the chlorophyll content um, in, in, uh, in the fields. Uh, if you just move one more uh, slide, uh, this is the crop performance. So this is the, the analytics that tells you what is your crop status uh, at, at a given point of time. Are your trees, have they, uh, when, are they dormant? Are they in the growth stage? Are they in the spring flush? So it identifies roughly, uh, uh, it identifies the status uh, of, of your trees as well as it identifies your, and it gives the value of your NDVI. So you're able to um, see the score, so how each block is scoring. This number might, you know, for, for the non-expert, be like, okay, what's a 0.7, what's a 0.72, but the relative variation of them, the relationship with respect to each other, looking at it and seeing that the north and the mid and the south, uh, northwest, mid-east, and the mid-south, all of them are, are, are giving you the same score, so they are within the same uh, um, stage, uh, growing at the same rate. And that percent change, that column that you're looking at, is pretty much the variation from last week to this week. Are we, how is the growth? You should expect a huge percentage early in the season. Uh, you know, when after, right after pruning, when you've got all that green leaves coming back. Um, you, so that's pretty much to identify and to highlight the changes every week. And that's a way for you to look at it as well and find those weak spots, find where, find those fields um, um, that the variation was not, or the growth is less compared to everywhere else. That would be a field that would need your attention and you would want to go scout it and have a closer look at it. And if I may uh, add something about that, um, I remind you that uh, farmers, uh, they are not, um, not sophisticated people. They are just a very busy people so they don't have the time to sit and uh, watch the numbers. So this app is very helpful because it's like a traffic light. You just um, focus on the, on the red ones and uh, just uh, check. So you don't uh, need to uh, go over all these uh, different numbers. Simplified um, traffic light, uh, the green, uh, yellow, and red, focus on what's important to you. One more thing just to say before we jump, Itamar, yeah. is uh, I got that question again. So the resolution that was shown is the satellite resolution. It's a, it's a sentinel resolution, 10 meter by 10 meter. That's the NDVI that was shown. Okay. Um, so another very powerful uh, tool for the farmer is the alerts. So as I told you before, farmers, if they want to 
go and scout their field, they, they need to sit in front of the um, images and to switch between different images, different dates in order to find where the uh, anomaly, uh, anomaly is and try to find where they need to go. So this app uh, developed by uh, Fluosat and S by Netafim is doing that automatically. It uh, just uh, brings you up the anomalies, anomalies and it's pointing you where is the alert, where is the problem? And it's also ranking them between um, new alerts, important alerts, um, high priority, and it just sends you um, an alert uh, to your email inbox. So uh, even if you don't uh, open the, uh, the uh, application, you will still be notified about the, um, the alert. And this is something that saves uh, farmers a lot of time because it gives them uh, a specific point to go out to the field and check it. They don't need to scout the entire, the entire field. And um, I also did some validation for this app. And here you can see uh, it's, uh, it's a corn field, but it's the same principle. And you can see the alert up on the uh, uh, left uh, corner. And this is um, a crop that I covered with the net just to see if the system will jump the alert or not. And here I have uh, another alert, but this is uh, just a road in the, in the middle of the, uh, of the plot. So you can actually snooze it because it's a terminate uh, problem. It's not uh, something uh, new, it will stay there. And on this image, uh, you can actually see the uh, net that I spread on the corn in order to test the, um, the alert app and it, um, it actually it worked, yeah. So um, after we've been going through this, um, um, all the slides so far, this is something that is happening uh, right now. I want to show you in a few slides what the future holds for us. And um, it's, it's very um, interesting, actually. So usually, you can consider drip irrigation to be um, a very precise irrigation system. But now I will show you how you can make it even much more precise than that. So if you can see the, um, the, the vineyard in front of you, and this is a vineyard in California belongs to um, uh, Gallo Winery, which is an excellent winery in California, very big, uh, very uh, progressed, and they are very sophisticated. But if you look on this um, vineyard, you don't need remote sensing in order to see the variability in this, uh, in this vineyard. It's highly variable, and there are, you can see that there are weak spots and uh, very strong spots. And that means that you have a lot of variability in both yield and quality. You will not get the same quality in each one of these uh, locations across the, the plot. And the question is, how can you manage this variability? Do you live with it? Um, can you do something uh, uh, in order to try and fix it? And this is what uh, we uh, took in order to try and solve it. So again, a vineyard, and uh, this is in, uh, in France. And you have a vineyard, and now you can see with the NDVI, you can actually see the variability in this uh, vineyard. Um, and again, like the image in, um, in California, this plot is highly variable. So the question, what you, can we do with it? So just imagine that you can take this plot, and you can just <coughs> divide it into small irrigation pixels, and you can actually manage each one of those pixels differently with different amount of water, different timing, maybe different uh, fertilizers even, and you can manage it using the remote sensing and using the NDVI maps in order to reduce this variability that you see now in order to all the vineyard will be uh, green. So this is exactly what we do in uh, Netafin. This is 
one of our um, um, developments that we are right now developing, which called um, variable rate drip irrigation or uh, VRDI. And this is what exactly what we do. We can irrigate each one of those pixels individually with different amount of water and time. And in order to do that, we need to use remote sensing. This is the key sensors for this kind of system. So I'll show you um, just um, a peek of uh, what I've done in, uh, in Israel. So we had a vineyard in Israel, it's a Sira from 2006. And usually what we saw that um, in the north part, we had low vegetation, low yield, but a bit better quality. And the opposite on the southern side. And if you look on the NDVI map of this vineyard, you can see that our observation matches exactly the NDVI map of this, uh, of this plantation. So again, NDVI can be a good indicator for the variability. So we did a lot of measurements uh, before um, we uh, installed the, the, uh, the VRDI system. We chose a few locations in the plot. And we did some measurements of uh, stem water potential, leaf area index, and of course yield. And just to give you a glance on the variability in terms of uh, stem water potential, look on the values in the middle of the season at the southern part and on the northern part. You see that it's twice the the uh, uh, the value of the stem water potential. It means that the vines there were much more stressed in the north. Why we lost you? Sorry, I had uh, no problem. With the internet. I hope that you all still can uh, hear me. N so, now you're back. Do you mind sharing your screen again? Because I think we lost sure. that. Thank you. Let me know if I'm back again. Yes, you're back. Go ahead. Excellent. Sorry for that. So you can see that uh, the variability in the NDVI matches the variability in stem water potential. So the problem is that we have variability, but we have only one irrigation zone, only one valve to this entire plot. And the solution that we found is to manage it differently and just um, um, divide this uh, plot into 30 by 30 meter pixels, uh, actually 12 irrigation zones, where I can actually manage each one of these zones differently. So here you can see on the map itself, the different uh, zones. You can see um, zone A1 to A6 and B1 to B6 are 12 uh, irrigation zones that can be differently irrigated. And when we talk about variable rate irrigation, we actually have two, two approaches. The first one is what I call the capitalistic approach, which is to increase the variability, to give much more water to the high potential, high yield potential plants, and to reduce irrigation to the one that uh, cannot yield a lot. Um, I call this the, the Trump approach. On the other hand, you have the, um, let's say, the Obamacare approach, which is the socialistic approach, where you want to reduce the variability and you give less water to the strong one and give much more water to the weak ones in order to make them grow better and yield better. And this is the approach that we are um, uh, using in our experiments. So this is just um, um, a description of the mo model that we use. And here in this model, I'm actually using remote sensing in order to do the irrigation scheduling 
for each one of those pixels. So I'm using NDVI. Again, I'm using NDVI in order to, um, to determine the KC for each one of those pixels. And I'm also using stem water potential or thermal imaging. And by that model, I can uh, decide how much and when to irrigate each one of those pixels. And I load it into the controller and just um, execute the, the, irrig the irrigation. Um, so this is a model that uh, we developed here in uh, Netafim. And something very important about the remote sensing uh, for this um, uh, model. So for vineyards, we can look on two time, um, uh, two stages on the growing season. The first one is the growing season from bud break to somewhere around the region when we most focused on the uh, growth of the shoots. So I'm looking on mostly NDVI, which is a good indicator for growing. After version, I'm looking mostly on thermal images because then I'm looking for controlling the, the stress, the amount of stress applied on each one of those uh, pixels. And I want them to have the exact uh, amount of, of uh, stress. So I mostly look on, um, on thermal imaging. So this is the two types of remote sensing uh, data that I'm using. So just to give you um, a short um, uh, results from this experiment. So on the right side, you can see the uniform irrigation before we installed the variable rate irrigation. And then you can see the variability in the south compared, uh, compared to the uh, north. And on the left uh, in 2017, you can see that the variability has almost vanished. So there's not a lot of variability between the south and the north. And you can also see that in the yield. So before the VRDI irrigation, you can see that the yield on the north was much lower than the yield in the south. But once we applied variable rate irrigation, um, and we did it in two years, in 16 and uh, 2017. You can see that there's no uh, change in, uh, there's no difference in, uh, in yield in the south and the north. It's, it's the same yield. So we actually managed to, to reduce the variability and to change the way this vineyard look like. And I can tell you, I'm not showing it here, I can tell you that last year, we shut down the system, we shut down the uh, VRDI system, we gave the irrigation back to the farmer and all the variability just came back as in 2014. So it was amazing to see that the variability just came back. Um, just, um, just a few slides on uh, citrus and not on vineyards. So again, um, uh, citrus, three hectares of clementine and highly variable. This is a very sloped uh, plot. Uh, you can see the, the creek in the middle, a lot of drainage, a lot of uh, soil uh, depth variation. And also we uh, did um, um, dividing this uh, plot into a few um, irrigation blocks. into 28 irrigation blocks and we um, you know, with the same uh, similar model we irrigated that and if you can see now the um, NDVI row in this case the Osavi map um, you can see the difference between two years before and after applying variable rate irrigation uh, the yield is much better uh, now and the, uh, the plot is much more uniform than before, and the the farmer is very happy with that. Yeah, and and seeking that homogeneous aspect of an orchard is really helpful, especially when you don't have capacity to do differential harvesting. Um, like if this is a case where you have the equipment and you have the capacity to go pick up 
uh, uh, grapes from certain specific area and put them in a different bucket, like that's where I would see, okay, maybe we want to emphasize the high performance and we want to give them more to keep them going. Um, and, it, and it goes back to a matter of like, what, what kind of uh, instruments, what kind of uh, equipments you have that would decide, do you want to go the approach of, of uh, uh, the socialist or, or what you described as let's bring everything to be the same or let's keep pushing the strong and, and keeping the, the others on a survival mode. So definitely that's what, 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 what your experience highlights Itamar is, is the potential of you are able to account and you're able to provide, to irrigate how much is needed, where it's needed, and as a result, give the best of, provide enough water for your crop, it could be the citrus example or the, or the, uh, the grapes example, to, to outperform and to reach the yield that, that is uh, projected. I've got a couple of questions uh, from our participants. One of them was uh, about the slide where we talked about the alerts and where we highlighted that these are the areas that you need to go and identify. And the question was, uh, they wanted to know if it was more of a, if it was a detection or if it was diagnostic. So we've talked about crop stress in the 101 course. Uh, there's a, a full session on it. I recommend um, you, you go back and, and refer to it. But the short answer is, what it does is it highlights anomalies. It highlights areas where they're performing, uh, the crops are, are performing very differently compared to everywhere else in the field. It's not diagnostic. It doesn't tell you if it's um, a nitrogen deficiency or if it's a bug. But what it does is that it identifies the area for you to go and scout it. There's always the, the agronomist part in all of that through the ground through thing. Um, and it, what it does as well is that it tracks it over time. It tells you if this problem area is increasing or decreasing in size and how it's progressing. So I would also recommend you check out the uh, 101 session three, I believe was about crop stress. Um, another question um, was, how do you apply fertilizer to the different small zones? Um, so with, with, with the drip irrigation, that's how you were applying with the VRDI. You would, you would design the irrigation system to irrigate and probably fertigate, add more fertilizers through the, through the water, correct? Yeah, actually um, for us, irrigation and fertigation is, prob is, uh, is practically the same. We do fer fertilizing using the irrigation system, so it's a fertigation. So I can decide to give much more uh, fertilizers to one pixel, so I can shut down everybody else and just irrigate this um, specific pixel with the amount of uh, fertilizers that I want. It's more like a technical uh, uh, irrigation in order to provide it with fertilizers. And it can be much more sophisticated and uh, um, um, you can use uh, different amounts and uh, different um, um, types of fertilizers. So this is the, the, the potential. Yes. One more question about the VRDI. It says, uh, the question is, is the VRDI about the dripper flow, the right change of the, and the irrigation frequency, or, or about the total applied water? What are you trying to optimize? We are trying to optimize the, the total, of, uh, the total um, applied water, actually. So the, the, the drip line itself is the same drip line in all of the orchards. That it's just a matter of giving different amounts and different timing to each one of the zones. Yeah, hence its name, variable rate drip irrigation. We're trying to uh, apply water at different rates. Perfect. I think we've covered some most of the questions that I got. If you guys have more questions, please send them in. And I apologize, we're going over time. Um, um, let's let's recap a little bit. Uh, we talked about uh, remote sensing and irrigation. We didn't get into too many details about the different platforms. You guys can refer back to the previous sessions. Uh, we talked about from data to decision and how NDVI is and imagery are helpful to uh, uh, to to bring more insight on the uh, KC. So once you know the KC, which is how much your <coughs> the coefficient, <coughs> excuse me, for that canopy. <clears throat> you can use the, the, the NDVI or, or that scoring index to um, 
get a, val a value for it throughout all of your orchard, all of your vineyard, all of your citrus. And, um, and how that NDVI would multiply it by the ETO will tell you how much you need to apply. And um, Itamar, you shared with us the work that you're doing at, at Netafim uh, around the VRDI, how this is um, um, taking advantage of the high resolution thermal in your experiments, you got that through by the Teravian uh, sensors, Teravian imagery, how using the thermal sensor, the NDVI uh, maps, um, as well as an already existing drip irrigation line to split your fields into zones uh, that account for the variability and adding water to it at a certain rate uh, and at a certain time that provides the, the right water at the right place uh, for your crops to grow. Um, amazing work. We really look forward to more uh, white papers coming out of it from your experience uh, on the almonds, uh, your work you're doing here in California uh, and across the world. What's really exciting about the work that you're doing is that it's there's a lot of crops involved. It's different geographies. So we really look forward to uh, uh, reading more about it. One more question came in about uh, the VRDI. It says, did the VRDI actually reduce the water use or increase the water use compared to the traditional sprinkler? What would you say about that? So in vineyards, uh, on the two years that we've done this experiment, we actually reduced the amount of uh, applied water uh, in about 20%. Um, in some uh, other cases, uh, sometimes we, we use uh, a bit much more water, but we certainly increase the yield. So it's a matter of optimizing the results that you need. Thank you. Um, guys, make sure you check out our blogs. We've got some uh, uh, a lot of content uh, that you can read and uh, case studies. Um, feel free to write us, uh, write me, manal at florusat.com, send us an email about what are the other topics that you guys, that you want to hear about in this expert session and your feedback on today's session. Uh, we're going to meet next week, uh, next, not next week. Okay. Sorry. That's my, uh, I'm used to saying, see you next Thursday. It's not next Thursday. See you next month on the third Thursday. That's going to be July 16th. Uh, on July 16th, we're going to uh, uh, meet again and we're going to be talking about crop nitrogen monitoring uh, and optimization with remote sensing. We're going back to the discussion of nitrogen recommendation, remote sensing, and how it applies uh, over different uh, commodities in the U.S. Um, Itamar, thank you so much for being uh, uh, our guest today. Uh, thank you thank for you. sharing your experience with uh, uh, imagery, remote sensing, and uh, trees. Um, and we really look forward to reading more of your published white papers and, and uh, getting, maybe we should reconnect at the end of the season when you're done with this batch of experimentation as well uh, to get uh, an update with, with, uh, with all the findings and, and how you're moving forward. We will do that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for having me.